So just to start off, would you mind introducing yourself with your name, where you work, and any other information that you would like to share? Sure. Uh, my name is Daniel Galau Alemnech, and currently work at the University of North Texas as a digital uh, curation coordinator. What is your current job description? So you can talk about what your duties are, what a typical day looks like, or what your biggest goals are. Sure. So, yeah. I think the best way to describe my job description is based on <clears throat> uh, the name, like what's digital curation in tech really. And my current position actually just didn't come out like that. It's kind of evolved. I started as metadata librarian like some 20 years ago and just my position evolved and currently uh, for the lack of better terms, we call it digital curation. <laughs> but you know, uh, it, it includes all kinds of uh, activities uh, related to uh, managing digital resource lifecycle. In, in a sense, from the very early uh, stage of selection, identification, uh, then you know, uh, digitization, if it is not born digital, and then uh, maintaining you know access kind of describing and uh, kind of uh, you know resource description kind of activities but it is similar with analog really it's only because the contents are now digital it adds another layer uh, into into the activities so but preservation is a main aspect of digital uh, curation activities because you know preservation the definition of preservation is slightly different from the traditional notion of you know, preserving you know, regardless of access. The simplest definition we use for digital preservation is ensuring long-term access. So it's about access, really uninterrupted access, regardless of the type of you know, uh, materials or the type of uh, equipment required. So ensuring like access to the user. So that, that has whole activities revolve around how do you make uh, the resource available uh, as long as they are necessary. So yeah, that's the, the center piece of uh, our work. What type of digital work do you do? Um, do you work with specific collections? And is there anything related to Texas that you think is super interesting? Sure. <clears throat> First of all, we are academic libraries. So as an academic library, the primary objective or goal of our activities is to serve our community, which is the faculty and students and researchers. At the same time, uh, University of North Texas is a public uh, institution. And we have also responsibility uh, to serve the public in, 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 in you know, a certain way. So actually the very first digital project we took was Portal to Texas History. <clears throat> So that, you know, we call it passionately PTH, you know, that involves, you know, uh, various stakeholders, players. And, you know, we have like right now more than 200 collaborators, the one who holds the unique items. So we, we provide the infrastructure, the technology, the guideline system, but the resource owners are actually came from multitude of, you know, from private collectors to small museums or, you know, archives and libraries and all the way you know so so that itself provide us opportunity to collaborate to a wide range of people and also uh, help us to deal with wide range of resources you know video audio letters you know books all, all kinds of things and uh, i don't know if you know like for texas uh, actually middle school i think grade seven they are required to have for studies uh, history of texas you know as a lesson and we actually provide lesson plan for, for you know, middle schoolers and you know, teachers are our primary users too. So we deal with all kinds of resource, resource types from audio, video, yeah. and you know, from one single page letter to you know, thousands of pages of documents and anything in between. And in terms of users, you know, we serve all communities it's about Texas. So this is one of, you know, if you search Google, you know, Texas, it's one of the top search results will be PTH, you know, it's very verified resources. So, you know, that give us opportunity to translate, you know, our collection type, our users type, uh, you know, uh, it's kind of opportunity to serve many communities. <clears throat> 
I should also mention, you know, like that's that's the main thing. But uh, even if that's the first project, we our digital collection now has so many um, kind of you know, uh, resources from local generated contents like institutional repository contents, which is in faculty works usually, and also students thesis and dissertation. DTD is one of you know the really unique content that we share uh, globally. Of course, we are very known uh, with uh, our ETD uh, electronic thesis and dissertation. Uh, not only we are one of the first to require digital uh, submission of you know, ETD in digital formats, which in 1999, only a couple of universities in the US or in the world started required at that time. And also we went back and digitized all our um, thesis and dissertation prior to 1999, all the way back to 1934, the first thesis we have. Retrospectively, so we are one of the few institutions who are fully digitized all, all our ETDs, and, and it's widely used globally. It's like uh, you know, accessed by you know millions of users uh, from two hundred countries. So it's, it's we are sharing our student research uh, and also faculty. Like uh, student repository is also another content that unique content we share uh, with the world as well. But there are many other like UNIT is very known for its music collection. So we share those music collection globally. Uh, government documents, we are one of the repositories uh, for that. And we, we have many projects with even state of Texas and Austin, like Texas Register. We have the official archive of Texas Register. We receive it every week. So there are many, many statewide and national in terms of, uh, and the newspaper is another, another collection actually, you know, uh, we receive continuously, you know, grants to digitize uh, newspapers for the southern part. We, uh, you know, not just Texas, you know, we go, uh, you know, like Oklahoma, Mississippi, you know, other nearby states as well. So all those are part of our, our digital uh, uh, project related activities and, and collections as well. So what is your personal educational and career background and what brought you to digital libraries? <laughs> okay. Uh, I may not be typical, you know, uh, digital librarian in terms of an experience background, uh, because, you know, digital library requires multitude of skill sets. Uh, you know, like in our environment here, we have like all kinds of skill and, and, and background and experience and, and preparedness, you know. We can, but we work together. I think collaboration is a key factor here. Everybody bring uh, something to the table. In fact, it's almost impossible to complete one project by one unique department. It's in, you know, we, we bring together a multitude of skill sets from different departments. So my personal experience, my first degree undergrad was library information science in Sawa University, Ethiopia. And then I went for my master's degree to England, University of Sheffield, one of the top information school in Europe. And I think that, that was really great. They uh, had solid uh, background. Then I came to the US uh, in 1999 for post-master's program in digital imaging, one of the first programs at that time. Then within a year, I continued my PhD. So my PhD is in information science. And for my dissertation, I worked on metadata area. I think the title was uh, <clears throat> kind of uh, identifying and assessing preservation metadata. I pick premise as, as a sample and see the adoption of premise in, in helping uh, preservation metadata. So that kind of put me into, uh, you know, digital library world. Yeah. And uh, while I was a student, uh, I was working as super JLA for uh, Unity libraries, which we started Portal to Texas History Projects. So kind of fit together my work and my study and kind of get, you know, a natural marriage there. So, you know, I've, when I finish, I automatically continue uh, working as, as faculty members here at Unity. But, you know, because I have PhD, that also uh, uh, allow me to do research, uh, in, you know, while I'm working as a practitioner here, I also continue uh, uh, doing my, my personal research in, in digital library area. So uh, I don't know if you know, but in, in the you know in academia, since you here in academia, uh, the librarians have faculty position. What that means is, yeah, of course, some some university have tenure, some may not have tenure, 
that faculty means you have three kinds of responsibilities. One is the primary assignments, which is the main job you are hired to do. Second one is um, research, you know, uh, what kind of research activity you can, you can bring in. The third one is service, which is professional service, uh, you know, uh, serving in committees and, and volunteers and that kind of stuff. So, you know, you know, we are we are fortunate to, to focus on those three areas. So that allows me to bring all my interests together. And that, you know, I also teach uh, in library school here that, that, you know, get to work with some doctoral students in, in digital library research area and as, as, as committee members for the dissertation. So all those kind of help me to, to kind of develop my skill and interest into, into one places. But, but as I said, the work require collaboration. Like in our uh, digital library division, we have, you know, varieties of skill sets, you know, bring from different angles, you know, it could be grant writing, it could be programming, it could be systems, it could be metadata or cataloging, or the, you know, the traditional skills still can be translated into uh, this environment. So, yeah, uh, I think that everybody's journey might be different, but still they have something to offer uh, for the overall work of uh, digital libraries in general. <clears throat> Do you mind talking a little bit about the type of research you do? Sure. <clears throat> As I said, the fact that uh, we are in academic uh, environment allow us, you know, uh, to, to involve in research. In fact, I, I'm fortunate, uh, you know, to be able to take my sabbatical leave last year, uh, and uh, I got a Fulbright scholarship offer, uh, which is a rare opportunity, very prestigious, and I'm very grateful. You know that you know allow you you know to go for almost a year and and fully focused on on, on the research area. So I pick uh, open access as 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 a research uh, agenda for me, and I promote it, uh, uh, open access. Uh, you know uh, benefit of open access, particularly in developing country. And since I was originally from Ethiopia, I had that network already. And, and Africa is kind of lagged behind in this, you know, you know this, the digital divide. So I think open access is a great opportunity in not only to be able to access what's out there, but also to share what's, what's, what's even out there too. So even if there are not that huge research, but even the minimum research they have, some of them are very unique and really impactful, uh, you know, uh, I mentioned some like tropical area disease, for example, the very unique and really important research. So sharing whatever uh, uh, local research is also is helpful. So I think I succeeded in that, but unfortunately the pandemic interrupted the, the whole process. And again, I'm fortunate uh, I was able to get another opportunity to redo, to continue. So I will continue uh, uh, my Fulbright this year in South Africa, Victoria. So the goal is to start uh, open access or digital library conference for Africa, because you know, as you know, different regions have their own uh, conferences. For example, Asia, there is specifically Asian Digital Library Conference. For Europe, there is specifically European Digital Library Conference. Now the name changed to TP. And for US or North America, it's international, JCDL, Joint Conference on Digital Library. But for Africa, there is nothing. While there are specific issues that needs to be dealt in the context of Africa. So my plan is, you know, uh, and my colleagues there are excited to work on that. So hopefully very soon we will see uh, a digital library conference on Africa. Uh, so that's the plan I have right now. And actually I'm currently editing a book on, uh, on open access, uh, you know, kind of digital, uh, open access in global perspective. So, but, but the conference will be focused on Africa and all developing countries. What do you love about digital libraries and what keeps you motivated to work in this field? Yeah. Well, you know, digital library by definition is a content in digital format. So the fact that in, in digital format, you know, the, it can be shared easily. You know, so accessibility is a key a key term here. You know, the fact that I started as metadata librarian allows me to see the back end. You know, what, you know, how, how do we make things accessible? It's not only the technological, you know, the migration or the preservation, you know, the bits aspect, but the user side, like how our users use or request or interact or access those documents or 
items. Yeah. So that part really fascinates me. Uh, you know, I teach indexing and abstracting, you know, those representation. How, how do we represent those? You know, based on the user's information seeking behavior as well. So, you know, it's kind of looking at the both sides, back end from technical aspect and the front end, the user aspect. How do they search? How do they request? How do they access? So bringing those two dots uh, really allow, uh, allow uh, uh, you know, to, to, to see both sides. So that, that's interesting to me. How do you define digital libraries and digital librarianship? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think uh, you know to, to make it simpler, just digital library uh, is a library of digital contents. So the digital contents it can be you know multimedia. You know it's not just limited to one type. You know it could be text. You know uh, audio, video, wide format. You know just all kinds of you know bring together. The only common things there is it's in digital. So the fact that in digital bring you know the technology aspect into into play you know so technology infrastructure are key here yeah. uh, so those are really I mean the traditional definition it could be internet library you know it could be you know you can you can make it but the key aspect is electronic it's in, it's in, in digital form so that you know. Uh, gives both challenge and opportunity, you know, challenge in terms of access, you know, I mean, and yeah, access, you know, how do you make them accessible, like in terms of preservation or in terms of visual impaired users or in terms of, you know, in the various aspects, you know, it has its own challenge. And at the same time, it's opportunity We talk open access. I mentioned our ETD was accessed by people from 200 plus country using, different devices from you know you know handheld to you know so all those are really opportunity and you know, so so uh, yeah the challenging opportunity will be a key one but it's an unlimited open up how do you think the field of digital libraries will change in the next five years yeah the fact is that it's dependent on technology Right there, and make it vulnerable and evolving. It's changing. So uh, you know, if we review the curriculum of uh, you know higher education, particular information science, you can easily see uh, how things are changed. Uh, if you see the uh, organizational chart of you know libraries currently, you will find new names now that was never been there before, you know, like scholarly communication library and, uh, you know, like just the last 10 years, all kinds of new names are there, you know, but the basics, the foundational skill sets are the same. It's transferable. It's really the organization is organization, you know, whether it's in print form or electronic form, the resource needs to be organized in a way users can find access use or using. So because of the it's dependent on technology, then the change, you know, uh, is continuous. It's continuously evolving, continuously changing, new standards, new development, new way of, you know, uh, viewing things, expecting things, you know, even users information seeking behavior is changing. You know, how do you serve, you know, people who want, you know, just uh, the most recent, you know, reference library, for example, is not there the way we know it. But but the service is still there in a more effective way, in a more, you know, uh, this way. So it's kind of it's continuously changing, continuously evolving, and it's, that's what makes it exciting and uh, interesting. What do you think that library programs should be teaching students about digital libraries? And do you have any advice for students who are interested in a career in digital libraries? Well, uh, you know, by looking at our group, uh, you know, how they get there and, you know, their, their skill, uh, it's different. So, uh, you know, everybody can play its parts. It's, it's, but, the, you know, one common factor is upgrading our skill all the time, you know, there are, because things change really fast, even sometimes, even academia, they are not keeping up with the change. You know, it's funny, 
normally, you know, uh, in academic environment, you assume the, uh, the research done in, in uh, information school, for example, is far ahead of the real practice. Technology really reverses that. It's amazing. Sometimes the Google research push library to do things fa faster than even the academia. Before the curriculum, you know, in place, we are doing something higher than, you know, really different. That can really go back and change. We should teach this course because it's relevant. It's already working. You know. So I think you know that kind of openness and 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 network. Like uh, I think conferences, like staying active in in the community is very important. Be, you know, staying active uh, in in specific area. You know, there are very many groups uh, you know, using social media or, or professional societies. There are continuous uh, you know skill upgrade. You know. Uh, so I think staying uh, abreast with, with the change is extremely important, but whatever skill sets they have previously can easily, uh, you know, fit into, into the uh, digital environment. And, you know, uh, I think uh, continuous learning is very more important in, in, if you are working in digital learning because of the fact that things are changing so fast. Is there anything that we didn't cover that you would like to share about either your experience or digital libraries in general? Well, uh, uh, collaboration is a key key term here, uh, yeah, because of the, all the, the skills required, all the network required is not in one place at all. So yeah, that collaborative environment is extremely important. I think Texas Digital Library is one one good example in bringing you know uh, statewide you know professionals into one and, and help each other, encourage each other, support each other, and share experience with each other and the resource. Yeah, you know, having that kind of, you know, because it's resource intensive, really having infrastructure, you know, shared infrastructure is extremely uh, important. So I think the collaborative aspect uh, uh, in, in many you know, ways is extremely, extremely important. And university to university, collaborate to collaborate, individual to individual. So I think uh, uh, we are grateful uh, to uh, TDL uh, in our context, you know, for, for allowing us to, to work together and to share resources, so being be it in a human or, or infrastructure. So that's a, the collaborative aspect is a key, key, key aspect here at institutional level or individual level. <clears throat>